This video is sponsored by Squarespace. This is an update and complete animation of the Enterprise USS Voyager, which will cover deck 1 to 15. There are many changes made, including a more detailed and textured 3D model of Voyager by Alex Kelm. It will be the most comprehensive and detailed animation to date of the 24th Century Federation Intrepid class starship operated by Starfleet. Although only 345 meters long, about roughly half the size of the USS Enterprise D, Voyager is more technologically advanced than the previous Starfleet vessels. Unlike the Galaxy class, the ship could not separate the saucer during an emergency. Superbly equipped for exploration and research, Voyager has an equally impressive array of defensive and offensive weapons, making it ready for action. The vessel was capable of holding 150 crew members and up to 350 people for a short period of time. At the very front and center is the navigation beacon, the auxiliary navigational deflector array, the transporter emitter pad, and the reaction control thrusters or RCS, which are located on both the port and starboard. At the top and mid-section of the saucer was the all-important main bridge, the briefing room, ready room, officer's mess, and the captain's quarters. Running along the side of the vessel are the phaser emitter strips, the observation port, several escape pod hatches, and an upper sensor array behind the bridge. Located at the bottom of the primary hall are the observation port, bottom phasers emitter strips, and cargo loading doors. One of Voyager's shuttle, the Arrow Wing shuttle, was integrated with the hull in the saucer section, and although it was never used in an episode, the production team did develop test footage of it leaving the vessel. On the bottom of the secondary hall are the navigational deflector assembly, additional phaser emitter strips, two torpedo launchers, power core ejection hatch, and for the back is the antimatter resupply assembly hatch, warp core ejection hatch, and the landing hover pad assembly hatch. Furthermore, the Intrepid class ship unlike many other ships, can occasionally land on the surface of the planet and have retractable landing struts that was located on Deck 15. Like the Galaxy class, Voyager warp nacelle were below the primary hull. Located at the tip of the warp engine nacelles is the Broussard's collector assembly, and toward the back of the ships are the impulse engine assembly, shuttle bay door, and the aft observation lounge. Even though Voyager and the Enterprise A share many similar design languages and characteristics, there were several notable features that made Voyager unique and different from its predecessor. First, Voyager lacked an interconnecting dorsal, which was a common feature with many of the older generation vessels. The overall shape is more aerodynamic and streamlined, with a dart-like primary hull and a flattened, elongated engineering section. Sporting an cell assembly that can pivot 45 degrees, making the Voyager a fast-looking ship. The Delta Flyer was a custom multi-purpose shuttlecraft which was used as a mid-range scout and personnel transporter. It can accommodate between 4 to 6 personnel and was operated by a single pilot. In addition, it was armed with 8 high-energy phaser array and a photon torpedo launcher for protection. Before we head over to the interior of the Voyager, I want to give a shout out to our sponsor, Squirrelspace. Squirrelspace is an all-in-one platform for building your brand and growing your business online. Stand out with a beautiful website, engage with your audience, and sell anything, including your product, content you created for your passion project, or just showing your online portfolio. Get started with the best in-class website template and customize it to fit your personal needs. 
browse each category of your business to find the perfect starting place. In addition, sell your product on an online store. Whether you sell a physical or digital product, Squarespace has a tool you would need to start selling online. Built-in analytics measure the impact of every sent email. Stand out on any inbox with Squarespace email campaign. Collect email subscribers and analytics for better to insight to grow your online business. Improve your website and build a marketing strategy based on your top keywords and most popular product and content. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash half screen to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. The bridge was a Starship Operations Center or Command Center and is located on Deck 1 on top of the vessel's primary hall. It was the nerve center and was manned by top officers of each department except for medical. Commanding officers supervised all ships' operation, ranging from vessel course control to tactical systems. Situated at the back of the main bridge is the airlock, two escape pods, and head. Toward the front and center is the main bridge, consistent of the operation, master's control situation monitor, security and tactical, engineering, main view screen, flight control, and science station. And finally, the conference lounge and ready room. At front and center of Deck 2 is the officer's mess and captain's dining room. The four outermost portion are the dorsal forward observation lounges, VIP quarters, and four escape pods. And toward the back is the radio transceiver, battery compartment, tactical scanner, and an emergency life support system for Deck 1 and 2. Located on Deck 3 were the Captain's Quarter, the Officer's Quarters, the Emergency Transporter Room, the Deflector Screen and Force Field Generator Room, and the Upper Hall Access Airlock. On deck 4 was the Ford Tactical Scanner and Sensor Suite, the Battery Room, the Emergency Life Support System, the 6 Personnel Transporter Room. At the back is the aft Starboard Torpedo Launch Bay and Structural Integrity Field Generator Compartment. Along the port and starboard were the dorsal forward phaser system and the hollow deck support machinery. At deck 5 were the forward tactical scanner and sensor suite, the upper section hollow deck, the sick bay complex, the science lab. and the emergency light support system for Deck 5 and 6. Toward the front of Deck 6 is the secondary deflector bay. While this deck is taken up by 54 enlisted quarters and 6 senior officers quarters. And located on the midsection are two hollow deck lower section a secondary computer core, and six escape pods. The back is dedicated for the replication section, including the inorganic replication compartment, the organic replication compartment, including the organic waste deassembler, inorganic waste deassembler, and the torpedo loading port bay. 
On deck 7 are the senior officer's quarters and 42 enlisted quarters including 10 escape pods and on the port and starboard are the RCS thrusters and fueling system. At the center of deck 7 is the main battery compartment, main horizontal Jeffrey tube network, cargo hole and cargo landing high bay, and a secondary computer core. Also situated on this deck is the force field generator compartment, several science lab, the emergency life support system for deck 7, 8, and 9, and a dorsal midship phaser system. In terms of volume, Deck 8 is probably the largest deck on Voyager's primary hull. Deck 8 consists of the structural integrity fuel generator compartment, deuterium injector engineering bay, and the deuterium tankage. This deck also includes a light support system, dangerous cargo hull, and the RCS thruster. Further up is the cargo bay, what could be hangar, which are encircled by the four phaser system compartment. Outboard are the airlocks and docking ports, and toward the front are the force field generators. At the lowest and smallest deck of the primary hall is deck 9A. It was probably the smallest deck on the vessel and is where the aero wing was located. The craft was intended as a high-speed reconnaissance ship that was capable of atmospheric travel and it was also intended for defense and evacuation purposes. Including on this deck was the aero wing shuttle parking bay, the aero wing shuttle fuel tankage, the cargo conveyor hatch access bay, and the transporter transceiver compartment. Deck 9B is the uppermost section of the secondary hall, which housed the Shuttle Bay 1 High Bay, the Shuttle Bay 2 High Bay, and the Shuttle Bay System Control Gallery. On the forward section is the Torpedo Launch High Bay and the Torpedo Loading Port Bay. Running along the midsection is the horizontal turbo shaft, six science labs, and an additional battery compartment. As we pan out, the warp core is located at the mid center with the replicated raw material storage. As we head further down to deck 10, we can stay the stellar cartography lab, the main engineering bay, the petty officer's mess and lounge, the elevator, the force field generator and airlock subsystem room, the fabrication bay, the astrometric lab, and the torpedo launch bay. Descending to deck 11 was part of the second most important floor, the main engineering deck. On this deck, you can find the shuttle parking bay, On the warp nacelles were the warp core and plasma injector bay, the Bussard's magnetic field generator and collector bay, and the Bussard's ionizing beam emitter. At the rear was the aft observation lounge, which was used as the meeting place for the ship's senior staff, as well as special event and gathering. At the center of the vessel was the primary computer room, main engineering, and a spare warp core storage well. On both the port and starboard were the cryogenic cooling system room, and at the front and center was the primary deflector generator bay. As we head down to deck 12, we can see the cryogenic cooling system room, the navigational and environmental system control, the warp plasma distribution engineering, the cryogenic fluid storage bay, 
the engineering hall EPS distribution node compartment, and the antimatter containment bay. On deck 13 were multiple science labs, antimatter pod jettison tunnel, primary deflector generator bay, warp core coolant compartment, and a warp core coolant surfactant intake and outflow. At the center was the emergency transporter room. It was used to transport an object from one location to another by using matter energy conversion. And near the bottom of the vessel was deck 14. It had the deflector screen and force field generator room, six personnel transporter room, damage control command, offices, diagnostic workshop and lab, antimatter processing, antimatter injector engineering bay, and emergency life support of deck 13, 14, and 15. And finally, at the bottom of the secondary hall is deck 15. Located at the aft of deck 15 is the tractor beam emitter, the warp core jettison hatch, and the battery room. This deck also includes four landing struts, an antimatter generator bay, 10 escape pods, and a transporter buffer compartment. The fourth section is taken up by the ventral midship phaser system, the plasma relay control room, and the spare warp core storage. Voyager carry a auxiliary warp core. This was not a direct replacement for the main warp core, but a serious component that can be used to construct a new core in case of an emergency situation. I hope you enjoyed this in-depth and detailed look into the USS Voyager. So what are your thoughts on the USS Voyager? Do you think it's a better version than the original Enterprise or the Enterprise D? Jump down on the comment section below and let me know your opinion. And if you want to see more technical 3D animation of the original Enterprise 1701, Enterprise A or D, check out the playlist on the right hand corner. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.